rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a moment of silence, please. Roll call, Trudy. Council President Skirts. Here. Councilor Snyder. Here. Councilor Stickley. Here. Councilor Chamberlain. Here. Councilor Skirts. Here. Councilor Fry. Here. All present. It's been a change since the last time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Council has had time to read the prior <coughs> meeting's minutes. Can we have a motion for movement? I would make that motion uh, to approve the minutes as printed. Second. Councilor Stickley made a motion to approve the minutes with Council Fry seconding. Any discussion? Council President? All in favor? Oh, all in favor? All right. All right. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Just keep the camera on her, though. Yeah. <laughs> all righty. Today we have um, Gary Keyes from Toledo Edison, who will be um, talking to us about customer assistance programs for fixed or low-income families. Right. Welcome, Gary. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having me. I'll pass these out. Uh, this is a uh, public utilities commission uh, program, and uh, we administer along with uh, Ohio Gas. This is for uh, residents, like you said, on fixed or low income, and also programs for people that have their gas or electric shut off. It's um, also through the uh, Jobs and Family Services. Uh, we have the uh, heat program as well as uh, the PIP program where they can just pay a portion of their electric bills. And uh, <coughs> they can either call, if anybody gets calls, any of the residents, they can either, there's a, on the uh, second page, there's a uh, phone number for Toledo Edison. You can call that number or, or get a hold of Job and Family Services. And um, that's that's pretty much it. And, uh, pretty cut and dry. We've this this program has been around for years, so a lot of, a lot of people are aware of it. A lot of residents are aware of it. So. How's it funded? What's that? How's it funded? Through uh, <coughs> it's through a writer program through uh, all of us actually pay into a, a pot. Um, for those, say if you're, if a uh, customer's on what we call the PIP program, uh, like a quarter of a, a penny for all the other like customers like us, we pay into that pot to help offset those those bills. And we we tr what we call true up every year. So that, that money pays for those, those customers. Like I said, that, that, pro, that PIP program has been around for years, especially in the wintertime when people have a hard time paying their bills. We have the PIP and you have the heat. Heat, correct. Yep. And especially with the, the hot weather we've been yeah. having, a lot of uh, a lot of people are seeing higher higher electric bills right now. Do these go out in these programs go out in your billing? Correct. Yeah. Yes, they do. How often do you guys send these out? Well, about twice a year. Yeah, usually, usually in the fall and in, in spring. Like I said, this is a public utilities program, right. but right. we we help help promote it. Yeah. So. Do you see more of this used in different areas of the state than? Uh, mainly in the Toledo area. We we really don't see that much out in, in this area. Yeah. Not, not very much. Uh, but in the Toledo, when I work in the Toledo, we we saw it quite a bit. More populated areas. Yeah, right. Any questions? For questions you? for me? Well, it's nice to have have this, and I appreciate it. Yeah. And I have extra copies, actually. So that we can have it. Yeah. Yeah. Put it on our website Thank you. too. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thanks, Thank Gary. You, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it. And and your lights will be off. 
tomorrow night. On the third. Yeah, tomorrow night. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate it. Okay. Moving on to committee reports, uh, buildings and ground. That, that would be me. <clears throat> we met with uh, Superintendent Brown on the 19th. The committee did, as well as with Tom. Um, we proposed to him uh, basically what uh, all of us spoke about. Uh, the council or not was not there. It was basically to allow them to utilize the building, uh, what used to be the state garage, uh, insure it, maintain it, paint it, maintain the grounds, and pay all the utilities on it. That was about what we offered to him. Uh, he said he would, you know, he counter offered a little bit because he would like to have the buses there, but. Uh, we spoke that we didn't want a fence and we didn't want buses parked outside. So at that, he was going to get back with Tom uh, on what he decides, but at this time, at this moment, he still hasn't, according to Tom, returned anything to him. So at that, um, unless somebody else has anything else, he, he has 20 buses, says he's going to get rid of three, he has three vans. Um, he believes that he can only get five inside. Uh, Rick and I went and toured it with John, and we thought we could get more like eight or nine. Um, we did make a statement, uh, Buildings and Grounds did, that if he needed a, another door put in the building, uh, it would be up to his expense, but if he did that, he could be able to get in and out better with more buses. Um, Hoist-wise, they already have a portable hoist that the school owns that are at the other building. Um, so they would just move them down, they just pour them, they put them in, raise them up, and, and so on and so forth. But I, I think that, that the ball is actually in uh, Superintendent Brown's uh, area, and he hasn't got back to Tom, so I, that's the only thing I have to report at this time. Unless there's any questions. Um, my question, just for the <coughs> public's um, knowledge, the council said that you didn't want fencing and you didn't want buses there. Um, one of our zoning laws uh, for the city is not to have fencing in the front and the buses would need, you know, the fencing all the way around. And also that I, if you could maybe elaborate a little bit as to why you didn't want the buses all parked on the outside um, for the public to know just more or less is that, um, the fencing was one of the issues, and when they were brought to us, it was supposed to be used for maintenance, is how we were told from the beginning, and then the buses were more or less a second um, issue of being parked outside that was kind of brought in after the fact of the maintenance. That is correct. It is, I just wanted, is that how all of council perceived it? Yep. I just was for when you said, you know, we don't want the buses. I just wanted to make sure that the public was aware as to why. Yeah, and we believed, uh, the committee believed, and, and uh, it would be a, a, not a very good eyesore on the main Shoop Avenue Corner. to have all the buses sitting there mm -hmm. and uh, have a fencing. And like you said, the ordinance mm -hmm. is already that we don't allow them to have fencing other businesses. So. Questions or? Right. So we're waiting on them to come back and respond. Yes, ma'am. Our report. All right. So there's no action on that. Department had reports. Our department's going to be busy tomorrow night. Yep, we got everything set up ready. Well, we'll be setting it up tonight, ready to go for fireworks for uh, tomorrow evening at 10 o'clock. And uh, as of right now, we don't anticipate any problems. So What's the weather report? Hot, chance of rain, but 30%. But okay. not a big deal. Maybe it will be okay. Um, and the mosquitoes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, other than that, we got our, our ISO evaluation was earlier this spring. The report's a fairly thick report that just came back in the mail today, and then half of it involves the fire, the other half involves the water distribution system. Uh, we're at the same rating we were before, but I'm going to sit down with Dennis when he returns and divest the uh, report, and we'll get it out, show you guys what that all means here. Uh, just didn't have time to get that around yet, and I don't want to do it without Dennis talking to him first. 
Our live burn on Troop Avenue went well last week. We had over 40 firefighters we trained, uh, did some training with that day. Um, thanks to the police department for helping us out with traffic and, and all went well with that. So, and we just got finished up with a couple of busy sessions of Safety City that went well again this year. So, yeah. so, other than that, that's all I have. Uh, just to expound on that, on the tomorrow night, there will be, uh, we're putting it out on the Facebook page, on our Facebook page, uh, the direction for people to come in, how they're going to be asked to leave, uh, same as last year. Uh, we just ask people that we're going to be funneling everyone to the, that goes out north. We'll head north, all the way to Airport Highway, then <coughs> head east. Just go around the block. Um, if we start having people west, it bottlenecks everything up, and we don't want people out there for an hour, an hour and a half trying to get away from the fireworks. Same way, going towards Linfoot Street will allow people to go south as well as east. Just go down a little bit, go through Parkview or Oak to get over if you're heading west. Uh, the 17th of July will be our next coffee with the city heads at Bigby. That's the summer one. It will be on a Tuesday from 8 to 9. So come out and drink some coffee with us. Also, uh, as Chief Sluter mentioned, Safety City is wrapped up. I don't have the final figures yet. Uh, Karen took a much needed vacation, so she'll be back next week, and we'll have those for you at the next council meeting. But I do believe we ended up with 55 or 56 kids. Uh, she was getting kids up till like 8 o'clock that morning, <coughs> still registering for the second session. So, both all four sessions were full. And I don't want to steal any of Tom's thunder, but we will be needing a safety and code meeting for several uh, pieces of legislation that we've got working on the uh, drug paraphernalia one, the voting one. And I'm not sure if we're ready on the UTV one, but we've got to be close on that one as well. So if we could get a safety and code meeting here sometime before the 18th of July, I would appreciate it. I'm going on vacation the 18th, so. Again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Jeez. I think that's it. Unless anyone has any questions. Yeah, Chief, uh, in your department, have you filled the plain clothes or the detective positions? Yes. Uh, Brad Croninger is our new detective. Uh, he was appointed. Oh, and one other thing I forgot. We made contact with Norfolk and Southern. Yes. They are nice supposed to be uh, working on the downtown tracks. Uh, the lady told us if it's not done by the end of business tomorrow, I'll give her a call back. I don't know. We, okay. I sent someone down to take a look at it, but it doesn't appear that they worked on it yet. So hopefully tomorrow we've got someone out. Otherwise, we'll be giving them a call. Okay, thank you. Now, I can't guarantee that everything's going to be fixed, but at least that's a start. Mm -hmm. Right, tear it up. Yeah, right. yeah, well, yeah, well, they'll wait until the 26th of July and tear it up. Yeah. How many calls did it take you? Well, I think we're about three months now. So, but it just it just takes finding the right person to yeah. make it happen. So, hopefully, that's all taken care of. Thanks, Chief. You're welcome. Dennis. Yes. Could, could I ask a question, uh, Rick, on the fire department? Mm -hmm. You hired a full-time paramedic captain, and I believe he's somebody that was out of town. Are our uh, firemen given opportunity first before we go out of town to apply for that, or they? They are if we if we, they are if they meet the qualifications to do such. We didn't have anybody qualified. No, not for what this person will be doing. No, the qualifications okay. or training in that we'd have anybody there in that position. Okay. So. But now, we do we do get consideration in house first. We're not. Yeah. Oh. And then yeah. that goes to the, then if we want to do something like that, I got to go to the civil service commission, and uh, they approved it. And so that's what we did. I have another question too. I, I haven't been down shoot. Is that like the where you put the had the burnt the house down is that cleaned up you know I, they were tearing the other buildings down today Ooh, so, are they responsible for it yeah they'll be clean that's their whole deal as okay. a property owner and I noticed that they were out there tearing the buildings down today okay. so. but they're responsible mm -hmm. okay thank you 
Any other questions? Okay, Dennis will be back hopefully on the 9th this month. Uh, Jamie. I provided you with the month end reports and the tax revenue report. Um, it's getting better. We're still not where we were last year, but it is improving. So that's looking good. Um, last week I also attended an FMLA uh, workshop, so I am a little bit more knowledgeable on that aspect. Um, yeah, since we've had a few people out lately, I'm going to get that caught up and stay on, tra on track of that. Um, I don't have anything else tonight. If you have any questions, let me know. Any questions for Jamie? Okay, Tom? Well, as the chief mentioned, we do need a, a ready for a safety and code committee meeting. I think we're ready with the under speed legislation, some suggested tweaks of that. And I can email <coughs> copies of that draft as well as the changes to the code that would bring back into the code um, the use of uh, paraphernalia for marijuana use, uh, which inadvertently got excluded and then the vote regulation so we have a full plate this time for the safety and code committee considering I can email uh, chief and I were working on the boat regulation stuff uh, this afternoon or this morning and need to tweak out a bit but I think as soon as you guys get a committee uh, meeting schedule we can fire off those drafts so you guys have those ahead of time also I finished the revisions to the bylaws for the um, proposed amendments to the WRA uh, regulations sent that along to the mayor and to Dennis and um, give them a chance to look at that I think once they've had a chance to review that and make any additional changes and I think the next step would be to get a copy to the council and the WRA as a whole let both groups look at it and go from there um, I think that's it Questions for Tom? Dennis doing okay? Uh, I mean, from what we hear, Dennis doing okay. Yeah, he's doing good. Good. He'll be back on the night. The safety and code meeting that you want to, is that something that can be done in half hour, one hour? Can it take longer than that? Uh, it shouldn't, depending on if you have any questions or concerns about our recommendations, but it shouldn't. We should be able to get wrapped up I would, think before an hour. I would think an hour or less especially if you guys have a chance to review the stuff ahead of time if anybody objects to the paraphernalia language they'll probably fall under some suspicion wouldn't they <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, I think so. <laughs> what's everybody looking at me for <laughs> how, how about the 16th before the council meeting It's up to you. It's at 4 p.m.? Steve. That's fine. Yeah, just what, what time do you think we should start? Oh, could you start at 4.30 might be pushing a little bit. It's 4 too early. I don't know. What do you think, Chief? 4 is fine with me. It's 4. Or 4.15. 4 whatever. So 4 p.m. on the 16th? Yeah. We have nothing under first reading. Let's move on to second reading of legislation. Resolution 2018-19, authorizing the mayor to enter an agreement with Tamco Capital Corporation for a new phone system. Second reading. Second. Council President Steers made the motion with Council Chamberlain seconding to place resolution 2018-19 on second reading. Councillor President Stewards? Yes. Councillor Schneider? Yes. Councillor Stickley? Yes. Councillor Chamberlain? Yes. Councillor Stewards? Yes. Councillor Fry? Yes. All in favor? 
Any discussion? No. <laughs> 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 you can see she's rusty. Six zero. <laughs> We have nothing under third reading of legislation. Um, under new business, I just got off the phone with uh, Tom Burkholder down at the pool, asked him for some numbers from our hot spell, and he didn't have anything for attendance. He did say that our concession stands was pretty much um, kicking some tail. We pretty much had the last couple weeks like $2,000 in sales on one week and I don't know what the other one was. It was just a little under 2000 so we're doing really well as far as that, but he was going to try to get me some numbers on attendance. Um, and other than that, uh, I talked to John Arps on the phone right before I came in and uh, we will continue to talk with Tom about the landscaping. Everybody has uh, been trying to get a hold of the landscaping company since they done the walk around and said yes it needs to be redone uh, they're claiming that they can't get hold of anybody from the city and um, we're not sure why all of us have cell phones and everybody's been at work so I'm thinking it's time for Mr. McWaters to make a phone call so we can get that taken care of but in the meantime our public works is going to go in and um, knock down some more weeds they've been they've been doing trimming as needed as best as they can with the equipment that we have until we can get it taken care of and with that they're also going to um, with Dennis not being here not sure how to maintain our new um, state garage uh, they hadn't really been told what to do with the new building and what we want to do with our new landscaping so they're going to go in tomorrow and take care of that as well because that's getting a little yes. bit of an yeah, eyesore so yeah, I'm going to have Trudy send the city a letter <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> <that's all right. laughs> so they're going to take care of that tomorrow and um, kudos to them for doing that and make that look a little bit better and then um, probably a buildings and ground are they just decide how they want to take care of that once um, we have a minute and they have some time what they want to do with the landscaping in front of that building. So uh, with that being said, I also want to thank Rick. I think he did a great job on uh, that burn. Um, shoot, that was great. And the police, I thought, with all the, the cars and the traffic and everything that went through there, I thought you guys did a really good job keeping the traffic under control and um, the wind picking up and everything. I thought it really went well right at the time that uh, fire took off because that's all I wanted to see was a big burn <laughs> and it took forever but it did happen so good job on that and uh, the fireworks tomorrow I'm looking forward to that hopefully the rain will stay down Should and be good. everybody will go out and see that um, we had our our second big tournament last night or uh, yesterday or all weekend actually it was a hot one and um, I think our parks and rec did a very good job uh, keeping everything under control. We had our surveyors uh, from Bowling Green okay. out there and um, they showed up and um, I'm anxious to see how uh, the reports went for that. So, any questions at all? For business? I just, I just want to mention that I think our pool rates have been pretty well received. I spoke with somebody that said Bowling Greens, they charge $7 a day but they have a lazy river. Yeah. Then I heard Perrysburg charge nine, and I thought that was a little high. I called Perrysburg. No, they charge twelve a day. Yeah, that's I don't. I've had no complaints with no, the rates at all. No, I think it's ours. pretty reasonable. Right. So. And I've had um, uh, a lot of good comments with everybody going in and the personnel and everybody. So. Yeah, I think it's going well. Okay. All right. So I guess we will move on to uh, pay the bills. I'll make that motion. I'd second that motion. Councilor Schneider made the motion with Councilor Stigley seconding to pay the bills. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> motion can six nine. You're good. <laughs> All right. Um, I need a motion to go into an executive <coughs> session. Uh, considering the discipline of a public employee. 
I'd make a motion to enter an executive session for discipline of a public employee. I would second that motion. Councilor Chamberlain, make a motion with Councilor Stickley, seconding to enter into an executive session. Oh, um, Council President Stewart? Yes. Yeah. Councilor Schneider? Yes. Councilor Stickley? Yes. Councilor Chamberlain? Yes. Councilor Stewart? Yes. Councilor Fry? Yes. 6 0. Motion carries. <laughs> 6 0. 6 0.